Hello everyone, this is Dave and uh, I'll be doing a short tutorial today on how to use uh, TJC's uh, summer program uh, that allows you to add 2D images to the screen and resize them and all of that kind of stuff. Um, this is my first tutorial video ever, so feel free to make a lot of comments about the content, about how I did things, things that I should have done differently, things that I could have done better, etc. Uh, I don't expect the quality of this video to be pretty, very good uh, as far as frame rate and stuff like that goes. Um, and we'll see what we can do, that, do about that in the future. So, as you can see, I've already got uh, the UDK uh, editor open, and I've made a really simple level here uh, that I'm not going to go over how to make, but it's very, very simple. This is just a 1024 by 1024 by 1024 room. You can see it's got lots of lighting, so it's amply lit. I've got a player start location, and I've got a trigger. If I open my Kismet, I've already added that particular trigger as a touch trigger. Um, and that's where I'm going to start at. So hopefully you already know how to do all of that stuff. Um, if not, you need to go back and look at some more basic tutorials. Okay, so let's go ahead and, uh, and get started with this. The, the first thing I want to do is I want to show you how easy it is to... Well, first, actually, I want to talk about why, uh, why we made this thing. Uh, many of you probably already know that if you uh, right-click and go to New Event and go down to HUD, there's a draw image right here, and this works fine um, so long as your game type is either simple game, that is, you didn't change the game type at all, or if it's uh, one of the iOS menu games, which you probably don't want to be using because it vastly limits what you can do. Uh, we wanted to be able to draw images in our own game type because uh, we need to make our own game type in order to make our quick time event fighter game that we've been talking about. And uh, uh, we wanted that to extend uh, UT game because it gives us all sorts of default sound effects and life points and all of that kind of stuff uh, and a nice looking HUD. So, um, so this was not an option for us at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. Now in order to use our system, you have to use two different Kismet nodes. And you can get to those by right clicking and going to new action and there's a 2D uh, category there and there's the two that you might want to use. There's add 2D image for creating a new 2D image that you want to show to the screen and then toggle 2D image for either turning on, turning off, or toggling an image and it really is just that simple. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to add 2D image here and I'm going to connect this to this trigger. Now of course you can add these images anytime you want. As long as you call this add 2D image and fill in the appropriate variables, you can do this anytime uh, as long as you do it before you try to turn on the image or toggle the image or anything like that. Um, it is important to note here that I did not attach this to level loaded and the reason for that is because sometimes the level loads and the HUD isn't ready to go yet and if the HUD isn't ready to go yet it leads to all sorts of errors. Uh, this is just one of those types of things that game programmers and game designers have to deal with every once in a while. Um, it, you know, logically it should be done on level loaded, uh, but because of some some program issues uh, and the HUD not necessarily being ready when the level is loaded, we can't do that. So if you wanted to do this in a real game, uh, most likely what you would do is you would just make a tiny trigger uh, right underneath the player start point, so the player can avoid it at all. Never even bother to tell the player that there's that there's anything there, and you can just go ahead and add this stuff. So, uh, one other thing I want to do here is just so that we can see when this happens, I'm going to add an object comment, uh, and I'm going to output that object to the screen. So I'm just going to put in triggered here so that we can see that we've triggered something, and I'm going to output that to the screen. Okay, so since we're showing 2D images on the HUD, we have to say what player is going to see it. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to right click and add a new variable, and I want to add uh, player and player. Now the, uh, the folks who designed um, Kismet decided by default that when you added a new player it would be all players and that's just silly in my mind but if we uncheck that right there it'll store just one player. Now of course we have to populate that variable with the player that we want to affect and that would be the instigator. The instigator being the person who steps on this trigger. And we just want to supply that same player as an input to, the, uh, to our add 2D image here. Okay. Alright, now 
as you can see, there's lots of variables that you can adjust here in case things change dynamically during the course of your game. Um, in my simple example here, these are not going to change dynamically over the course of the game, so it's much easier for me to just go ahead and type these things in here uh, rather than connecting them up as variables. But you could connect them up as variables as well. Um, so the first thing I have to do is I have to choose the material that I want to use. Uh, I haven't mentioned it yet, and I should mention it. I'm using dual screens here, so you're not necessarily seeing everything that I have open at the time. For instance, when I open the content browser, it's going to open it on my second screen. I'm going to drag it back over here so you can see what it is that I'm doing. So I'm going to do a search on um, Up Arrow, which is a very simple material that I made for our group. Uh, which is just a up arrow. You can see two of these are textures and two of them are materials. So I'm just going to filter out and show only materials. Uh, it's a good thing that this works with materials and not textures, by the way, because it's really, really trivial to turn a texture into a material. Um, all you have to do is connect it, in our case, up to the uh, emissive channel of the new material. Uh, in this 2D system, only the emissive will show up to the screen, not the diffuse, which you're probably used to using. So if you're going to make your own materials, make sure that these are connected up to the emissive, okay? And whatever you see in the emissive there is what's going to show up. Um, I also have my alpha channel connected to my opacity, and that's so that I don't see the black background that this was originally made with. Instead, I see clear space there. Uh, if you need more information about how to do that, it's a it's kind of a complicated process, and it depends on uh, what what 2D editor you're using. So you might need to look at more tutorials in order to do that. But regardless, there we go. So I'm just going to select the material that I want to use. Here I'm going to use the red arrow pointing up, which is, again, just an arrow that I made for our quick time event. Um, I'm going to close this. And uh, that's still selected in there. So if I just hit this green arrow, it'll populate the material field uh, with that material. Fun, fun, fun stuff. OK. So next I have to give it an ID. And this is critical because uh, I'm going to refer to this ID later when I want to turn this material on and off. Uh, so I'm just going to name this up arrow. And uh, I will need that name later, so just keep that in mind. X and Y is the X location on the screen and the Y location on the screen. Uh, you probably, if you've programmed 2D games at all, you know that it's fairly typical for um, for computer graphics programs to put the origin that is 0, 0 at the top left of the screen up here as opposed to the bottom left of the screen like you're used to in your math classes and stuff like that which would be down here so as y gets bigger it goes down the screen as x gets bigger it goes across the screen so x works like you would think y actually works in the opposite but um, so this is just where you want it to show up and uh, just to make sure that it's somewhere uh, on the screen that you guys can see I'm going to put it at 400 300 XL and YL, those are standard abbreviations for X length and Y length, so it's just the width and the height. My image happens to be 64 by 64, so I'll go ahead and start off with 64 by 64. And this is active Boolean is whether or not you want that thing to show up immediately. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Okay, and I'm just going to close my Kismet, and I will demo my game. Now, it hasn't added the image yet because I haven't stepped on that trigger yet. So let's walk over here and step on that trigger. And there's my image, okay? Very, very simple stuff.